Well, let's take our Bibles this morning and uh, be in prayer for Brother Byron Fox. He's been in a lot of churches over the past several months, and uh, after tomorrow, well, tomorrow, Lord willing, he's going to go home and, and uh, be with his wife, Renee, and, but you be praying for him this morning as he comes and preaches God's Word. Well, I'm going to try to teach you a song um, that you've never heard before, and I'm looking for my music. I had a piece of music here, Miss Sarah. I found it. Never mind. You've got to watch these pianists. They'll steal your music if you're not careful. Didn't you enjoy hearing Brother Simon play that? I'm sorry, Simon. I thought more people would say yes to that. But uh, <laughs> you can't get a word in hardly. Simon, that was great, man. Brother Simon, how old are you? Uh, 13. 13 years old. A teenager doing something good. How about that? That's really, really good. Miss Sarah, good job playing today. And Pastor, thank you for letting me come back. So let's get the words up on the screen to this song. It's a brand new song. That's the first verse, and then we got a chorus. Let me sing it for you, and we're going to try to learn it together. It goes like this. Jesus Christ was born on earth. What a glorious day. Now he offers all new birth. What? A glorious day, glory, glory, all the saints will sing, hallelujah, what a glorious day, name of the song is what a glorious day, all right, try it with me, that first verse, we're going to go back to that first verse, Jesus Christ was born on earth, now for us that was a glorious day. Now he offers all new birth. He's willing to save everybody that will come to him. Come unto me, he said, all you that labor and heavy laden. Let's try it together. It starts on Jesus Christ. Everyone ready? Jesus Christ was born on earth. What a glorious day. Now he offers all new birth. What a glorious day. Glory, glory. All the saints will say, Hallelujah, what a glorious day. Move all the way down to the fourth verse, gentlemen. Let's go to the one that starts with, Soon my Lord will call for me. I was here in Ohio last fall. I was in a church in Mainville, Mainville Baptist Church, Mainville, Ohio. And several of my friends had passed away that, that week. I had a friend pass away this past week. Um, he was an uh, exceptional Christian man. Praise God. Well, um, so that week in Mainville, about a year ago, yeah, about a year ago, right, right about this time of the year, I'd, I'd been out soul winning during the day and a variety of uh, uh, activities that day. Uh, they have a, a prophet's chamber on the third floor at that church, and I'm up on the third floor, and I'm getting ready. I'm making sure my bed's ready and all that. It's about 1130 at night, going on midnight. And I sang those words out loud to the Lord, just kind of singing. Soon my Lord will call for me. What? A glorious day. I was thinking all my friends that he'd call them home, and it won't be long if you're if you're Christian, he's going to call you home too. It won't be long it'll be calling me home. So I sang that little line out loud, just, just kind of making up a song right, right there at the bed, just thinking about my friends who are better off than I am today. They're with the Lord right now in His presence. And I sang that little line, Soon my Lord will call for me. What a glorious day. And then I thought, that's not too bad of a line. Then I said, you know, I'll remember that in the morning. Then I said, no, I won't. I've done, I've done that before. <laughs> so I went downstairs to the auditorium and... Soon my Lord will call for me. What a glorious day. 
And I didn't know the rest of the words. La, 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 la. If, if you get one line of a song, if, it, if that one line is any good, you can do something else. And so I piddled around at midnight on this song. Sing that verse with me. Soon my Lord will call for me. What a glorious day. Ready, everyone? Soon my Lord will call for me. What a glorious day. All the ransomed. I shall see what a glorious day. Glory, glory, all the saints will say. Hallelujah, what a glorious day. All right, there's four verses, and we're just going to try to sing the whole song. If it's a train wreck, It'll just be a train wreck. All right, everybody just do the best you can, starting on Jesus Christ. And you're able to sing with joy on this song. Here we go, everyone ready? Jesus Christ was born on earth. What a glorious day. Now he offers all new birth. What a glorious day. That's it. Glory, glory, all the saints will say, Hallelujah, what a glorious day. Jesus gave his life for all, what a glorious day. Will you now upon him call, what a glorious day. That's right. Glory, glory, all the saints will say, Hallelujah, what a glorious day. I learned Jesus died for me, what a glorious day. Through his blood he set me free, what a glorious day. Glory, glory. That's right. Hallelujah, what a glorious day. Soon my Lord will call for me, what a glorious day. All the ransomed I shall see, what a glorious day. Glory. Amen. Amen. What glorious day. Wonderful. Oh, let's open our Bible, please. A Psalm chapter 9. Psalm chapter 9. We'll sing that song again tonight. And I appreciate you uh, <laughs> uh, singing along and uh, uh, trying with me on that. Because I know learning a brand new song on a Sunday morning is dangerous. But we did it anyway. <laughs> Psalm chapter 9. If you would please open the Word of God with me there. I'm so happy to be back. Let's just go ahead and talk about this beard, okay? Uh, I went three days without shaving in January, and my wife, Renee, says, you got to grow me a beard. I said, baby, I don't know if this will work. I've never had a beard. Well, so I, I started, you know, and I was about four weeks into it, and I was driving home through Atlanta, and I stopped with this one-month-old beard at this point. I stopped it at Dunkin' Donuts. I got a little craving for a a glazed donut. I went inside. I said, I'd like one of those glazed donuts, please. And she gave it to me. I said, how much? She says, oh, you can just have it. Oh, okay. Thank you. So then I'm about to get home. I'm just about home. And um, it's 1 a.m. I'm driving to, into Virginia. And my wife calls me at 1 a.m. and says, would you like to be the best husband in all the world? I said, what do you want? We've got this place called 7-Eleven, and they have those Slurpees. And she says, stop and get me a Slurpee. Just get me a little one. Okay, so I, I went inside, got her a little Coke Slurpee, and I went up to pay for it. He said, ah, you can just have it. Huh. Pretty interesting. So two days later, I'm flying through Atlanta, and I haven't eaten in 18 hours. I'm hungry. And five guys, you know that burger place? 
And they're, they're expensive, not in the airport. They're more expensive in the airport. I'm like, I am hungry. I said, I'm just going to do it. And I went over there, and when five guys gave me my food, brother, I'm keeping the beard. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Reverse Santa Claus, they're giving it to me. Maybe they think I'm 91 and homeless. Whatever it is, it's working. Now, I'll tell you, since then, it's, it's still working. I still, I'm still having people give me things. Uh, I, you're stuck with the beard, friends, okay? As long as this is working, I'm keeping the beard. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Psalm 9 and verse 17 will be there in just one second. I did bring a, uh, about 50 CDs with me. I believe Christian homes ought to have Christian music in them. Amen to that. I don't need help sinning. I need some help living for Jesus. And I've got several out there. The newest one for children, Bible Stories for Kids, Volume 5. We've released that since I was last here. Bible Stories number 5 is out there. And then we've got two. I, I know it's about Christmas time. This one's called Christmas Jubilee. It's got banjo and guitar and mandolin and fiddle and, and uh, dobro. You say, Brother Fox, Fox, what's a dobro? Get this and you'll know what it is, okay? <laughs> Got a little harmonica on there. This is festive. And, uh, and banjo is not on every cut. Now, Joy to the World, banjo is great. Oh, Holy Night, eh. We let the banjo player leave. <laughs> you can step out and take a break. <laughs> we don't need a banjo on Oh, Holy Night. But uh, you, you'll love this. And then um, here's a very calm, gentle, uh, just beautiful piano uh, renditions of Christmas. It's called Peaceful Christmas Piano. At your Christmas party, you can play that or whatever. They're any size donation. I was told years ago I need to write a book every year. Well, here they are, two coloring books, okay? And uh, this is my level. God did it. And our church got a bunch of these, and I'm so glad about that. Because I'm tired of our children being lied to. Evolution's a lie. Evolution is not true. It's very unscientific. It's not true. Second law of thermodynamics. What does it mean? What does it say? Everything's falling apart. And we all know that's true. It's not getting better. It, it's, it's not winding up. It's winding down. And so 32-page uh, uh, book on, uh, on creation. Then David is the new one. And you want to know what Goliath looks like? You can get one of these and find out what he looks like, all right? There are any size donations. Sister Marty's going to help me. And I hope you'll get some of that stuff. And there's only about five of those David coloring books left. Uh, though I know where 15,000 are, okay? Let's get in the Bible. You ready? Amen. Thank you, sir. We're glad you're ready. <laughs> Rest of y'all ready? Because here it comes. Psalm 9 and verse 17 is a very sober verse in the Word of God. The Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Let's read it together. Ready? Begin. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So much of the word of God is happy and joyful. But this is very sober. I'm glad our pastor made comments that you made about this election this coming Tuesday. I believe every member of our church needs to vote and need to vote according to the Bible. Amen. Amen. We are, to, we are to be a steward of everything God has given to us. Our money, our, our time, our talents, our influence, and our vote. And um, I've not been called to win, but I have been called to stand up. Amen. And be tragic to let an opportunity to stand up in a voter's box for the Lord to pass us by this coming Tuesday. Let's make sure that we get it on our docket and let's do it. Amen. Amen. And... This verse, mm, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Does the Bible talk about hell? Oh, yes. In fact, look this way. The only reliable source of information about hell is the Bible. Amen. People have made up all kinds of stories. There really is a hell. Those who die in their sin, having rejected Jesus Christ, are headed toward an eternal hell. Why do we mail out the 20,701 John Romans, 
We're trying to be a blockade for the Lord to stop people from going to hell. Amen. First preaching I ever heard in my life, the preacher preached about an hour on hell. I'm glad he did. I never heard preaching before. I'd heard a lot of cussing. I'd seen a lot of stealing, a lot of bad things I'd seen. Our family didn't go to church. The church came and got me and brought me. And the preacher preached that first time I ever heard preaching on hell. And I knew that night I didn't want to go to hell. And I didn't get saved, but by the grace of God, I got saved the next night Amen. on a Thursday night. And thank the Lord for His mercy. But the second part of this verse is our text. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now, God does judge countries. God judges nations. There's four ways in the Word of God that God primarily judges nations. Four ways. What are those four ways? Well, war, pestilence and disease, natural disasters, and baseless leaders. And in America today, we have some of the basest people in office I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, thank God we do have some that know the Lord and stand up for righteousness. I don't endorse any, any politicians. I, I just don't do that. You do what God leads you to. I, he does not lead me to endorse any politicians. I'm trying to speak to as many as possible. I did a radio broadcast yesterday with uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, uh, Miss Winsome Sears. The weekend before, I interviewed... Governor Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia. See, Virginia is in a great big um, election right now, too. 2,000 seats up for election in Virginia. And it ends this Tuesday. We've had 44 days of voting already, and only, only 11 percent of Virginians have, only 11 percent of registered voters in Virginia have gone down and voted. Isn't that a shame? I'm expecting 100 percent of our church to go out and vote this Tuesday. I really believe 100% of us need to go down and vote. And vote for righteousness. But we got some of the basis people. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm very thankful that Mike Johnson was put in as a Speaker of the House. I believe it's a gift from God. He knows the Lord. I'm not endorsing him. He's, he's, not, a, he's not perfect. There's no office holder that is perfect. Do you understand that? There's one perfect Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ, and we're thankful for Him. But Mike Johnson, I appreciate how he's already led in prayer and he's talking about in God we trust. I appreciate those things. I've been with him. And uh, I thank God for him. Little fellow from Louisiana, how about that? A fellow from Louisiana being Speaker of the House. Pretty amazing. But I want to preach for just a little bit this morning on the sin that is destroying our country. There's a lot of sin. And sin separates man from God. There's a lot of sin in our country right now. Like the sin of pride. Pride is a sin. God resisteth the proud, but He giveth grace to the humble, the Scripture says. Psalm 10, verse 3 through 4. The wicked boasteth of his heart's desires and blesseth the, the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. That's what the Bible says about proud folk. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 29, 23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride is a sin. Greed is a sin. It's one of the most prevalent sins in America today. Greed. We've got more than anybody else in the world, and yet we're not satisfied. Just got to have more. Lust, extravagance, greed. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money. There's poor people who love it. And it's the root of all evil. 
That's what the Holy Scriptures say. Covetousness. Exodus 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Jesus said in Luke 12, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And greed, it manifests itself even into stealing, being a thief. Is that the kind of testimony you want? That you're a thief? God forbid. Exodus 20 verse 15, Thou shalt not steal. But what about all the substance abuse? What about all the drunkenness? All the drugs. By the way, alcoholic beverage is the number one drug in America. And if you've got some of it, I beg you, go home and dispose of it. Alcoholic beverage, there's 75 passages in the Word of God. I'll give you the passage if you want. You ask me. I've got them inside this phone. 75 passages that warn against alcoholic beverage. It's destroyed so many homes in Ohio. Proverbs 23. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. And the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. So many people have lost their testimony while being inebriated. Look in Scripture. We've got Noah, pretty good fellow. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But then he goofed up, didn't he? Got drunk. What'd Lot do? Well, he led his family in a very bad way, did he not? But then he gets drunk and does gross immorality. And that's how we have the two nations, Iran and Iraq. Do you understand that? Came out of drunkenness and doing something highly immoral. So many sins, pride, greed, drunkenness. What about some of these sins that nobody wants to call a sin anymore? Like the sin of laziness. Do you know that being lazy is a sin? The Bible teaches a work ethic. Any able-bodied man who refuses to work is a bum. Now, one of the things that I'm commanded in the Bible, I am commanded by God Almighty to help those who can't. But I am not commanded to help those who want. And those that don't have a work ethic, they need to change their ways immediately. America's looking for some workers. Our church needs some workers. There's always been a labor shortage. The one prayer request by Jesus was pray for laborers. So the sin of laziness. You got scripture for that, Brother Fox? Yes, 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. Even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Wow, that's strong, isn't it? How about the sin of violence? Destroyed other people's property. I live in Newport News, Virginia. Do you love it, Brother Fox? Oh, yes, I love it. I went down to pay a bill downtown. When they were paying my tax bill, went inside. I said to the lady, I said, ma'am, I was born in Newport News. I'm a lifetime resident of Newport News, Virginia. I said, I want to say something to you, ma'am. I love my city. I said, ma'am, does anybody say that to you? She said, I never hear that. There's so much crime and so much mischief. Renee and I sleep with shotguns on either side of us. She got her little 410 over there and I got my 12 gauge here. She's got her 9 millimeter there. I got my 45 here. That's the kind of city we live in. My tires got slashed two weeks ago. That's the kind of city I live in. Some of God's people got to be there though. Where it's dark, we need some light. 
And just in the last two years, we've started Newport News Baptist Church, my church in Smithfield, Virginia. I kept begging and pleading and imploring and <laughs> threatening and whatever I could do. And we got us another church started, preacher. Ben Webster is our pastor. Now, I, I'm still a member of Calvary Baptist Church, but I'm glad that right in my city now we got us another lighthouse. Yeah, that's what we need. We need more. I'm in a bad city. Uh, recently, I was out of town and uh, the police chased somebody right through our backyard. We have a privacy fence and I have a great big old privacy fence. Uh, the criminal jumped the fence into our backyard and jumped back. So the police, 3 a.m., knocking on the door and Renee comes with the shotgun. They're like, it's the police. <laughs> That's the kind of city we live in. It is a shame to destroy somebody else's property. I've had people break into my car. One time they broke into my car, got all kind of stuff out, and I had a music baton. <laughs> and as they took everything else, they, they laid that music baton on the hood of the car and left it for me. <laughs> I'm glad I'd pay $29 for that thing. I'm, I, I, at least I got my baton. <laughs> uh, ridiculous, destroying other people's property. Amen. It's a sin. Well, so many sins I've got here. The sin of immorality. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And these things try to be normalized today. Homosexuality. No. I knocked on a door. In a city, I was just going door to door, knocking on doors and so forth. And a woman came to the door. I said, I'm Byron Fox. This is Jamie. I said, we're from Emmanuel Baptist Church. She said, didn't you see my flag? I said, yeah, I saw your flag. What flag she had out there? You know which flag, that pride flag out there. I said, yes, ma'am, I saw your flag. I said, we want to talk to you about the Lord. She said, don't you know what that flag means? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. I said, your sin is not a special sin. It's just a wicked sin like all sin is wicked. And you just try to talk to people. I've only seen a few people in that lifestyle get saved, but I've seen a few. Praise God. I got this tie in New Zealand. And while I was there in New Zealand, I saw somebody in that lifestyle get born again. Amen. Who's been in the church ever since. Amen. The Bible says the Lord knoweth how to deliver. Amen to that. Amen. He does. And such were some of you, the Bible says. I'm glad I've been redeemed. I'm not any good at all. The only thing good about me is Jesus. I got a great Savior though. And no one's ever been born a homosexual. That's not true. And all kind of lies being told about all kind of things. Tolerating it's not enough. And accepting it's not enough. We've got to embrace it. I'm not going to embrace it. I can't. I love people. Don't think I hate people. I don't. I love people. Every group. There's not a group that I don't love. I've asked God. When I was 15 years old. We had a preacher come from West Virginia named B.R. Lakin. And he prayed this. Oh, Lord, please put a love in my heart for everyone for whom Jesus died. That's what he prayed. I was mesmerized by what he prayed. I wrote it down. I'm praying that today that God will put a love in my heart for everyone for whom Jesus died. Now, that's everybody in the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His everybody. See, God loves everybody. If you're listening, say amen. God loves everybody exactly where they are. Exactly where they are. He loves everybody exactly where they are. But He loves us too much to leave us exactly where we are. He wants us to get saved. And His goal, God has a goal. Did you know God has a goal for us? What is it? To become, to become conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Our perfect model, our Savior. I must get right to the heart of the message today. What is the sin? I've named several sins, but what is the sin 
That is, destroyed our country. It's found right here. When I pause, say the next word, verse 17. When I pause, I'm going to point out to you the sin that is destroying our country. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. We forgot God. Our country has forgotten God. Our nation was founded on the existence of God. Have you read the Constitution of the United States of America? The most referenced source of information in our Constitution is the Bible. Three times more than any other source. The Word of God. Do you remember the word creator? I, I don't believe in evolution. I've already said that. There's a creator. And our founders, though not perfect at all, they knew something about the Lord. I want to give you six thoughts fast. Don't look at what time it is. I know what you just did. I'm like, hey, let me just tap on that phone and just, uh, oh, I see what time it is. <laughs> I know. Don't look at the clock a moment. You got an extra hour. I think that means a preacher gets an extra hour to preach. Is that what it means? Hey, man, I like some of y'all. Y'all like, yeah. Six ways we've forgotten God. Number one, we forgot God's creation. We forgot it. Psalm 24 and verse 1, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I go back to it, this evolution. It's come up three times already in this little sermon. But we're lying to our children. Amen. And I reject that. Children, as they've gotten this coloring book, I've had, and I've, I've just given these to five more public schools. I'm trying to get one million of these out. One million. We're at 73,000 so far. Since March, 73,000. And our church here helped a lot. I've had children say, we didn't know God did this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God called the dry land earth. I have children constantly, 12-year-olds saying, we didn't know that. 51 million American children last year didn't go to church one time at all. To any church. To any church. You mean 51 million American boys and girls didn't go to church one time last year? No. But in the public school they've been lied to. We forgot. Our country has forgot that God created the heavens and the earth. All nations will be turned to hell and all uh, the wicked shall be turned to hell and all nations that forget God. Number one, we forgot about God's creation. Number two, we forgot about God's authority. God's in charge, friends. Jeremiah 10.10, 10, the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. Listen careful. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. James 4, 7 and 8. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. God's authority. You know, I live in a, an area with lots of military. We have the army, and I saw all those veterans stand up. God bless you. We've got the Army, Fort Eustis, Army Base. We've got lots of Navy, 17 naval bases within one hour's drive of my house. 31% of all Americans' Navy is within one hour's drive of my house. And uh, all these different branches. The Coast Guard are there too. A uh, little, little Navy boy. Admiral gives him command. Navy boy says, I'm not doing that, sir. <laughs> How do you think that's going to go over? Not well at all. Because, see, the admiral has authority. Friends, God has authority. And in the Word of God, God doesn't give suggestions. 
I come and I give y'all some suggestions, you know, but uh, learn this new song. And I'm so glad to see the, the parking lot. And we talked on the phone about the parking lot. And how many stalls you got? I, I can come, I can make suggestions. God doesn't give suggestions. I have opinions. God doesn't have opinions. God's got the facts. God has the truth. All truth is God's truth. Amen. And God doesn't give suggestions. He gives commands. Remember, he says. Remember. We need to remember that God created the heaven and earth. We must remember that God's the authority. Number three, we have forgotten God's judgment. We have forgotten God's judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Men, praise God for a bunch of men here in the house of the Lord today. Men, let's remember we're going to give account to God. We're going to be judged on how we let our family. It's a big deal. Like I believe every man in this room ought to say, now look, we're going back to that 5 o'clock service. By the way, what time is the 5 o'clock service, everybody? Very good, yeah. Trying to make this easy. I think the men ought to say, come on, let's go back to church tonight. And men ought to say, let's, let's read the Bible in our house every day this week. Do you think homes need the Word of God? Yes. Yeah. Men, we're going to stand before God and give an account. We're going to be judged on how we've done. Have we followed God's command or not? Have we just kind of forgotten them? Ignored God's holy commands? Ladies, please keep yourself unspotted from the world. Is that your desire, ladies? I hope so. I thank God for our ladies at our church. Some of the finest ladies in, I think, the whole world that really are aspiring to do things right and noble and holy. Don't those words sound good? Holy, noble, pure. All right, we forgot about God's creation. We forgot about God's authority. We forgot about God's judgment. Number four, we forgot about God's wrath. God's wrath. Romans 1 and 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I don't want Ohio to do unrighteous things that has the wrath of God upon it. In, uh, in Virginia... Until just recently, it was against the law to commit adultery in Virginia. And it came up in the House of Delegates. They said, you know, it's never enforced. We probably ought to just repeal that law. We have 100 members of the House of Delegates. 100. They serve two-year terms. All 100 seats are up for election this coming Tuesday. And in the House of Delegates, 99 of our House of Delegates said, yeah, we probably ought to repeal that. One man stood up. He's a Navy SEAL. He does two finger pull-ups, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need seven or eight arm pull-ups, you know what I'm saying? I need three or four of y'all helping me. <laughs> John McGuire. Delegate John McGuire. One Navy SEAL, one Christian man. I was with him the night he got saved. I was with him the night I watched God save him. One, one Navy SEAL said, I'm standing with God. The vote went 99 to 1. But do you know that's a righteous law? It's righteous for a state to have a law against adultery. It's agreeing with God. Amen. I was in a meeting with Governor Ron DeSantis four weeks ago. And I brought up the question. I said, Mr. DeSantis, Governor, on May the 1st this year, you signed a law 
A law that said that if you harmed and perpetrated, I'm trying to be careful with my words, a 12-year-old or younger in the state of Florida, if you did that, if you did that heinous thing to a child, 12 or younger, that you would be subject to capital punishment. I said, Mr. Governor, would you elaborate on that? He said, I don't like to have to supervise capital punishment. This was a Tuesday. He said, last night I had to supervise capital punishment imposed in my state. He said, I don't like it. He said, but we have to do it. You're not allowed to harm a little child in Florida in that manner without there being consequences to it. I say amen to it. It takes courage. And I'll tell you what, we want the governor to have big courage. How about us Christians having some big courage? I'm glad that our pastor got up and made some statements today. You may not even like his statements. I don't think our, our preacher ought to be telling us much about elections. Government is a divine institution. The home, the church, and the government are three institutions that God himself started. I think we need to be involved with the church. What do you all think? I think we need to be involved with having Christian homes. What do you all think? And I think we got to be involved with the government too because God started it. It's inconceivable that the preacher wouldn't say a thing about the election this coming Tuesday. Amen. Amen. I say thank you, Pastor. And it takes some courage because there's always some people going to probably call and, and leave you some messages. I get to fly to Virginia tomorrow. <laughs> and somebody slashed my tires again. Yeah. We've ignored God's wrath. Number five, I've got to wrap this up. We forgot about God's love. Our country forgot about it. That God loves us. Say it with me, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Those 25 words could change all everybody in the whole country and the whole world. <laughs> Those 25 golden words. God so loved the world. He loves everybody in the world. Down in Louisiana. Independent Baptist Church down there. Sent their men out soul winning. Two of their men went and knocked on the door of the bouncer at the bar. At his house. Like what? He said, we're from the church. I don't want anything to do with the church, he said. Make a long story short, those guys just wouldn't give up. Time after time after time. Guess who finally got saved? Burton Gates, the bouncer at the bar. What's he doing these days? Oh, he's starting his second church now. That's what God can do. Take a bartender and a bouncer at the bar. Save them. Clean them up from the inside. Put the Holy Ghost inside. Put a big burden in their heart and lives. There's a fellow who played for the Kansas City Royals. Pitcher. Pretty good. Played three years, major leagues. Problem was, he's a drug addict. Became a drug dealer. The devil take everything you've got. And old Charles went to prison because of his drug uh, issues. Went to prison. Guess what? The Christians went by there and led him to Christ. Amen. Yeah, he's a pastor now too. <laughs> Greenville, Mississippi. <laughs> That's the love of Jesus Christ, isn't it? Amen. The love of Christ constraineth me. Does it constrain you? It causes me to want to do something in the cause of Christ. But we forgot in America, we forgot about the love of God. And then lastly, we've ignored and forgotten about God's salvation. Does everybody need to be saved? Oh, yes. If our pastor could get saved for everybody in Ohio, he'd do it, but he can't do it. There is no such thing as secondhand faith. I give you my coat, size 48 coat. I give it to you. Size 11 shoe, I can give it to you. 
I can't give him my faith. I can tell you about it. I can try to share about it. But every person must come to Christ themselves. That's why tomorrow I want us to still be in that school tomorrow. I want us to keep that Bible club. If God will let us. Acts 4 and verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I was at a wonderful church in Maryland. I said to the pastor, I said, Preacher, is there somebody who lives right here by the church? Right here by the church campus that's not saved? He goes, oh yeah, the man next door is not saved. He said, but... I don't think we'll probably ever see him saved. He's been so cold to me about the gospel. He's a fine pastor. I said, Preacher, could we just go one more time? Could I go with you? And we went over there. We got inside. His name was Ray. I said, Ray. I said, could I tell you about the best thing that ever happened to me? He said, yeah, what's that? I said, let's sit down. It's going to take me seven or eight minutes to tell you about it. We sat down and I told him about the night I received Christ as my Savior. And the Holy Spirit began to work. I said, now Ray, from what I've understood is you've not saved. I said, now Ray, wouldn't you like to get saved today? He said, yes, I would. I said, that's wonderful. I said, our pastor here is going to lead you to Christ right now then. And the pastor had the joy of getting his Bible out and leading Ray to Christ. And guess who came to church that night? Ray and his wife. Guess who came forward and made it public to everybody he'd gotten saved that night? Ray did. For the longest time, Ray had left God out of his life. Just ignored the Lord. He was 60-some years old when he got saved. Would you bow your heads for a moment? Have you forgotten to get saved? You see... I had a friend die Friday. My friend Jim's with the Lord. He's an exceptional Christian man. Have you received Christ? See, Jim could give you his testimony how he received Christ. Can you give a Bible testimony that you have received Christ? How many of you know for sure you are saved? Would you lift a hand and say, Brother Fox, one thing I know is I know I'm saved. God bless you. You may put your hands down. Or there's some in this room who said, Brother Fox, I don't know that I'm saved. Brother Fox, I think I may have forgotten to get saved. Is there somebody in the room like that who would say, Brother Fox, would you pray for me, Brother Fox, that I'll get saved? Would you slip a hand up right now and let me pray for you? Is there somebody like that? Would lift a hand right now and say, Brother Fox, pray for me. That I'll receive Christ. Anyone? Anywhere? Now, how many of us Christians have kind of forgotten some of these things of the Lord? And we forgot to tell others about Christ. That should be high on our list of telling our friends, our co-workers. How many of you have some co-workers that are not saved? Oh, yeah. And we have some neighbors that are not saved. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget to tell them. Let's all stand. We're going to pray, and then those who want to come forward and pray, or whatever you want to do, repent, whatever you need to do. Make some commitments, men, about your home. Oh, Lord, please touch this invitation. We pray in Jesus' name. As the music plays, come on, come on. All that want to come, husbands and wives, young couples, older couples that want to just come and pray up here. You don't have to get on your knees if you don't want to. Just stand and hold hands. Husbands and wives that might want to come and pray. Young people that God is speaking to your heart. Would you like to come? Would you like to intercede on behalf of someone else? Yeah, who else wants to come? Somebody else? Yes. Is there somebody else that'd like to come? We're not in a big hurry. Do you believe that verse? The wicked shall be turned into hell 
and all the nations that forget God. I'm so thrilled and thankful that we were able, by the grace of God, to mail out these John Romans. What an opportunity. I'm glad that Preacher led the way on that, and I'm glad the church supported that. It's a righteous thing to do, wasn't it? To remind our community, there's a God in heaven. Wake up, everybody. There's a God in heaven. And His Holy Bible is true. There's one book that can straighten Ohio out. What book is that? The Bible. Men, would you make some commitments as you stand there about your holy living? With heads bowed, how many of you plan to be back tonight at the 5 o'clock hour? Raise a hand and say, I'm, I'm coming back tonight. Good. we got to make these commitments. One more verse is being played. The preacher's going to take over here in a second. I want you to listen carefully to the pastor as he makes his comments. Let's be sure to not leave the Lord out. Let's not forget about Him. Let's not check it off this week. Hey, I went to church, that's enough. No, no. You and I are accountable, aren't we? May the Lord help us not forget the Lord. The Word of God says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, that in all things He might have preeminence. Yes, Lord. May the Lord occupy that sole position of authority in our lives. We love him. May we live for him. May God help us. Father in heaven, we love you. We're thankful for the word of God today. And Lord, thank you for the clarity and the simplicity with which the word of God was handled today. And Lord, we are burdened for our nation. We're burdened for our state and our community. We're burdened for our homes, our families. Father, may it not be said of us that we have forgotten you. Amen. Lord, wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Yes, Lord. The word of God says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us, God, keep you preeminent in our lives. Amen. Lord, while... We've forgotten about your authority, your judgment, your creation. Lord, may we not forget your love. May we not forget, may we not neglect so great salvation. Lord, we're thankful that you died in our place, paid for our sin. We're thankful that you were buried and rose again from the grave and that we can have salvation through your blood, the forgiveness of sins. Father, help us live boldly for Christ. Amen with compassion for the lost. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated.